Welcome to China Discovery's official. I am James. Today, we will travel across the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean, covering thousands of nautical miles to reach Washington, D.C., where a military conference in the early 2020s recorded a statement that drew particular attention from defense analysts. At this conference, Admiral Sam Paparo, who at the time served as commander of the United States Pacific Fleet, stated that China's new submarine systems were assessed by the United States as having a direct strategic impact on the United States. According to the United States Naval Institute and the United States Department of Defense, this statement was not merely a political message. It reflected an ongoing shift in the strategic environment beneath the oceans, where new technical capabilities are significantly expanding the operational reach of China's naval forces. What stands out here is not the wording of the warning itself, but the technical reality behind it. From deep beneath the ocean, several of China's strategic systems have reached operational distances that had never before appeared in the history of the country's navy. The key concept guiding today's analysis is distance, not emotion, but reach measured in miles beneath the deep ocean surface. This is not merely a story about weapons. It is about a shift in the balance of strategic capability. As China steadily expands its maritime deterrence through a notable pace of technological development. For the United States, the modernization of China's sea-based nuclear forces is no longer a hypothetical scenario. It has become a technical variable that must be closely monitored and seriously calculated. And in the next section, we begin with the most important platform enabling this transformation. Type 094 submarine. To project power across vast oceans, a Navy first requires a platform stable enough to carry missile systems to sea, sustain operations continuously, and remain concealed for extended periods. That role is fulfilled by China's Type 094 Jin-class nuclear submarine. The Type 094, designated by NATO as the Jin-class, is a second-generation nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine operated by the People's Liberation Army Navy, developed during the 1990s to replace the outdated Type 092 Jia-class. The Type 094 represents a major step forward in China's naval modernization. The first unit was launched in the mid-2000s at the Bohai shipyard in Huludao and officially entered service a few years later. By the mid-2020s, estimates suggest that between half a dozen and fewer than 10 units are in active service. These submarines are primarily based at Yulin Naval Base on Hainan Island and in the Bohai Sea region, from where they conduct strategic patrols in the South China Sea and the Western Pacific. The appearance of the Type 094 marked a new phase in China's sea-based nuclear deterrence. For the first time, the People's Liberation Army Navy gained the ability to sustain continuous strategic patrol cycles beginning in the mid-2010s, with an estimated several patrols conducted annually through the mid-2020s. What makes the Type 094 particularly significant is not only the submarine itself, but its role as the primary launch platform for submarine-launched ballistic missiles specifically the JL-2 and JL-3. Each submarine is equipped with a dozen missile launch tubes, translating into several dozen ballistic missiles when the class is fully deployed. This capability allows China to strengthen its nuclear triad, encompassing land-based, air-based, and sea-based forces, and to establish a credible second strike capability, even under high-tension scenarios. According to United States Department of Defense assessments in the mid-2020s, the contribution of the Type 094 forms part of China's broader expansion toward a naval force numbering in the low 400s of vessels, reflecting the rapid pace of development. From a technical perspective, the Type 094 uses a pressurized water nuclear reactor with an output in the range of several hundred megawatts. This allows for near unlimited operational range and patrol durations of roughly three months per deployment. Maximum submerged speed reaches several dozen knots, with a safe operating depth of roughly 1,300 feet. Although early versions were assessed as relatively noisy, China has continuously refined the design. The Type 094 variant, appearing in the early 2010s, significantly reduced acoustic signatures through structural and system improvements. By the mid-2020s, the Type 094B variant is believed to have integrated pump jet propulsion technology, further enhancing underwater stealth and long-term operational capability. With an estimated unit cost of under 1 billion United States dollars, the Type 094 is substantially less expensive than American ballistic missile submarines such as the Ohio class, which exceeds several billion dollars per unit. It is precisely the strategic patrol positions of these Type 094 submarines that
that give missile range figures an entirely different meaning. When operating from protected waters, such as the South China Sea or the Bohai Sea, these submarines can fully exploit the effective reach of the weapons they carry. The Type 094 therefore stands not only as evidence of China's defense industrial capability, but as a core component of its modern naval operational structure. While technological challenges remain, the pace of improvement and level of investment indicate that this platform is continuing to evolve rather than remaining static. The JL-2 missile. The first time the United States entered the operational radius, the JL-2 represents the moment when range ceased to be a theoretical figure on paper and became a geographic reality that could be plotted on a map. Julung-2, also known as JL-2, is China's second-generation submarine launched ballistic missile. It marked a decisive transition from the earlier JL-1 system, whose operational reach was limited to roughly 1,000 miles and confined largely to regional waters. The JL-2 program began in the late 1980s, developed on the technological foundation of the DF-31 Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, and officially entered service in the late 2000s. This period marked the first time China's sea-based nuclear deterrent extended beyond near shore defense and into broader oceanic spaces. From a technical standpoint, the JL-2 measures roughly 43 feet in length, with a diameter of approximately six and a half feet and a launch weight of about 46 tons. It is a three-stage solid fuel missile, enabling short launch preparation time, long-term storage aboard submarines, and suitability for extended patrol deployments. The operational range of the JL-2 is estimated at approximately 4,600 to 5,000 miles. This figure carries particular significance when viewed within the geography of the Pacific Ocean. From strategic patrol areas of the Type 094 submarine, such as the South China Sea, the JL-2 is capable of covering the entirety of Alaska, including several major United States military installations. At the same time, the Hawaiian Islands which serve as a critical logistical and command hub for the United States in the Pacific, entered the theoretical reach of a Chinese submarine launched ballistic missile system for the first time. When visualized on a map from the South China Sea, Anchorage in Alaska lies at a distance of roughly 4,300 miles, while Honolulu in Hawaii is located at approximately 5,000 miles. This means that for the first time in history, portions of United States territory and strategic military bases fell within the stable operational radius of China's nuclear submarine force. Without requiring Chinese submarines to leave familiar waters or penetrate deep into adversary-controlled zones, in terms of payload, the JL-2 can carry a single high-yield nuclear warhead or be configured with multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles. This configuration expands the number of potential targets in theory and significantly complicates missile defense planning. The circular error probable of the JL-2 is estimated at roughly 1,000 to 1,600 feet, using inertial guidance combined with satellite navigation systems such as Beidou and GPS, along with maneuverable re-entry vehicle capability to improve penetration against intercept systems. Re-entry speed is estimated at approximately Mach 20, placing it among the higher-performance submarine-launched ballistic missiles in service, compared with the United States Trident 2D5 which possesses a significantly longer range and greater warhead capacity. The JL-2 remains lower in maximum technical specifications. However, with an estimated production cost of roughly 50 to 70 million United States dollars per missile, the JL-2 is regarded as a cost-effective sea-based deterrent, well-matched to China's domestic command structure and integrated command, control, communications, computing, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance architecture. Although the more advanced JL-3 is gradually replacing it in the mid-2020s, an estimated several dozen JL-2 missiles remain operational aboard Type 094 submarines. At this point, the distance between the open ocean and United States territory is no longer an absolute barrier. It has become a geographic and technical equation that can be measured, calculated, and planned for the JL-3 missile. If the JL-2 marked the moment when the United States first entered the operational radius, the JL-3 is the point at which the map itself is almost redrawn. When a system surpasses a range of more than 6,000 miles, the question is no longer whether it can reach a target, but from where coverage can be achieved, the JL-3, also known as Zhulong-3, is China's third-generation submarine-launched ballistic missile developed by the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation. Built upon the technological foundation of the DF-41, 
The JL-3 is designed to replace the JL-2 aboard Type 094 submarines and, more importantly, on the future Type 096 tank class, which is expected to be significantly quieter. The JL-3 program began in the early 2010s, with a successful test recorded in the Bohai Sea in the late 2010s. Reports from the United States Department of Defense, beginning in the early 2020s and subsequent updates, indicate that the missile has entered active integration within China's operational forces. In terms of specifications, the JL-3 measures approximately 46 feet in length, with a diameter of roughly 7 feet, and a launch weight approaching 55 tons. It uses a three-stage solid fuel design and employs a cold launch mechanism, reducing acoustic and thermal signatures during submarine launch. Its estimated range of roughly 6,200 to 7,400 miles places the JL-3 in the same category as the world's leading submarine launch ballistic missiles, including the United States Trident 2D5. At this stage, distance is no longer a technical limitation. It becomes a strategic variable determined primarily by submarine patrol locations, a point that will become clearer in the next section. With a range estimated between roughly 6,200 and 7,400 miles, the ability of the JL-3 to reach United States territory is no longer speculative. It becomes a geographic equation that can be plotted directly on a map. From a purely technical perspective, this means that large portions of North America now fall within the theoretical operational radius of a Chinese submarine-launched missile system. Even when launched from waters close to China's own coastline, from the South China Sea, where China's strategic submarines frequently conduct patrols, the theoretical coverage of the JL-3 can extend across the entire western coast of the United States. This includes major urban and industrial regions in California, the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as Pacific-facing states such as Washington and Oregon. These distances, estimated at roughly 5,600 to 5,900 miles, fall well within the technical limits cited by multiple Western defense analyses. More notably, when considered from the Bohai Sea, a heavily protected internal maritime zone located near China's political core. The theoretical operational radius of the JL-3 extends deep into the North American continent. On a strategic map, this range may include regions far inland within the United States, potentially reaching major political and economic centers in the eastern part of the country. At this point, the discussion is no longer about rhetoric or intimidation. It is simply a matter of spatial geometry and distance variables that can be objectively measured and illustrated. In terms of payload configuration, the JL-3 is believed to be capable of carrying between three and six independently targetable re-entry vehicles, or alternatively, a single higher yield warhead, depending on configuration. Compared with the JL-2, this represents a clear advancement in payload flexibility, increasing theoretical options for warhead deployment. Accuracy is also reported to have improved significantly with an estimated circular error probable between roughly 500 and 650 feet. This is achieved through a combination of inertial guidance, satellite navigation using Beidou and GPS, and stellar guidance. The missile is also believed to incorporate technical countermeasures designed to reduce intercept probability, along with a very high re-entry velocity estimated at approximately Mach 20. The production cost of each JL-3 missile is estimated at roughly 60 to 80 million United States dollars reflecting the level of investment China is committing to its sea-based strategic deterrent. It is within this context that the statement made by Admiral Sam Paparo in late 2022 takes on its full significance. When he publicly confirmed that six Jin-class submarines had been equipped with the JL-3, it was not merely a political declaration. It was an acknowledgement that China's undersea strategic operating range had entered an entirely new phase. By the mid-2020s, United States estimates suggest that several dozen JL-3 missiles are in operational status, with production concentrated at Factory 307 in Beijing. When a system reaches this level of capability, Washington's repeated emphasis that it is closely monitoring developments becomes not only understandable, but a logical response to a shifting global strategic deterrence balance. This monitoring is not driven by assumptions of immediate conflict, but by the nature of modern submarine warfare itself. A ballistic missile submarine operating quietly beneath the ocean represents an inherently uncertain variable. When technical range becomes sufficient to allow effective deterrence from waters close to national territory, sustained surveillance by potential adversaries becomes unavoidable. Shorter geographic distances also compress warning and decision timelines, 
placing significant pressure on existing command and defensive systems. However, China continues to reject assessments from the United States, arguing that such evaluations are exaggerated and intended to amplify security concerns in order to justify adjustments in defense spending. Beijing reiterates its policy of no first use, emphasizing that its nuclear forces are strictly defensive and deterrent in nature. Chinese officials also point out that the United States remains the country with the largest nuclear arsenal in the world, maintaining roughly 5,000 nuclear warheads. Even so, in modern military analysis, political debate does not always capture the full substance of the issue. At sea, what matters is not public statements, but force structure and measurable operational reach. In undersea operations, analysts do not track the movement of individual submarines in isolation but rather the ability of an entire force to maintain a stable and continuous presence within a suitable strategic radius. This capability, more than rhetoric, is what has drawn close attention from American analysts toward the activities of China's submarine fleet. We have now traced the trajectory of China's notable rise in sea-based nuclear capability, a subject that has attracted growing interest from Washington as well as from defense analysts around the world. From concrete technical specifications to deeper strategic implications, this evolution is gradually reshaping the international security landscape. Viewed as a whole, three key milestones clearly illustrate this process. The first is the Type 094 Jin class, the platform that enabled China to project its nuclear deterrent into the open ocean on a sustained basis. Although early variants face certain limitations, improved versions and successor generations are steadily enhancing performance forming the backbone of a credible sea-based second strike capability. The second milestone is the JL-2 Julong-2 missile, which significantly expanded operational reach compared to earlier systems, bringing more distant regions for the first time within the technical envelope of China's submarine force. This represented a critical transition, transforming the maritime domain into an essential component of China's overall deterrence structure. The final milestone is the JL-3 Julong-3 missile, a system that has nearly removed distance as a technical constraint, enabling intercontinental scale reach with an estimated range of roughly 6,200 to 7,400 miles. The ability to carry multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles and improved accuracy. The JL-3 has elevated China's sea-based nuclear deterrent to a new level, approaching that of long-established nuclear powers. This development is not simply a matter of military technology. It reflects a long-term strategic trend within China to build a modern force capable of safeguarding national interests in an increasingly complex security environment. The speed at which these advances have been achieved highlights substantial investment in research, development, and defense industrial capacity. By the mid-2020s, the overall size of China's nuclear arsenal has grown significantly compared to earlier decades, with sea-based forces playing an increasingly prominent role. These missiles and submarines do not need to be used to exert influence. Their continuous and silent presence beneath the ocean, positioned within appropriate ranges, is sufficient to shape how other major powers calculate strategy. They compel adjustments in defensive systems and security planning to account for new variables. In sea-based nuclear warfare, the greatest strength does not lie in immediate action, but in the ability to endure over time. That is the strategic equation posed by modern submarine forces today an equation that is understated in appearance, yet profound and long-lasting in its global impact.